Goku and Beerus clash blow for blow with Goku Super Saiyan 4 proving to be quite a formidable challenge for the God of Destruction. The others watch on in awe as they see Goku struggling for the first time in quite a while. He's been decimating everybody with this power for as long as they can remember, and now here he is, actually struggling. It's insane. Broly says that if they keep fighting like this, it's not going to end well, and he should step in to stop them before it's too late. Bra tells her father to be careful, as if this guy can beat Uncle Goku, then he's a real threat to them all. Broly smiles at his daughter, saying he was once too, and he'll do his best to make sure that this guy won't be. Broly erupts into his legendary form and blasts right into Beerus, landing a gigantic punch onto his gut. Beerus is surprised by the force of the hit and is then launched right into the ocean. He is able to stop himself and launch back up, throwing an energy blast right up at the two. Broly is able to catch it and throw it up into the air as Goku swings in for a kick to throw Beerus away. Beerus blocks the strike and takes on both of the Saiyan brothers at once. To his surprise, these Saiyans work amazingly well together. All of the Saiyans he knew were proud warriors who hated to fight side by side, but here are these two, fighting as if they were one. It's something he thinks could be his downfall someday if they train, but right now, things aren't going so terrible. While Goku seems to be slowing down the longer they fight, Broly's power just seems to be increasing. Every blow of his gets stronger and stronger. He may in fact be the one to be the Super Saiyan God. Beerus boosts his power to knock out Goku, as he was getting bored of him being in the way. Goku collapses back onto the boat in his base form, with Vegeta thankfully catching him. Broly erupts into more of a rage after his brother is knocked out, which excites Beerus even more. The two fly around in a heated battle that causes the boat around them to swirl violently. Broly can see the others struggling, so flies away from the boat so everybody will be okay. With no more distractions, he lets loose on the God of Destruction, with Beerus knowing that he's found him, the legendary Super Saiyan God. He knows that the Saiyans had the legend of the Super Saiyan, and while this form Broly has certainly looks like it, his powers are way different. While Goku's power definitely had a higher boost, his power dropped significantly after a while, which was very disappointing. Though even though Broly has to be the Super Saiyan God, he has no godly key coming off of him at all, which is very curious to him. How could a Super Saiyan God have no god key? Maybe if he pushes him some more, this key will activate. Beerus increases his power alongside Broly's, laying waste into him as much as he can, hoping to draw out that godly energy. To his surprise though, it never comes. Broly's power is indeed increasing, but now at a much slower rate, and there seems to be no signs of any godly energy whatsoever. Does he have it within himself, but just doesn't know how to activate it? This is very interesting. Beerus and Broly fly back onto the boat, with Beerus telling Broly that he's seen and judged him very well. He has incredible powers, the greatest of any Saiyan he's ever seen. He is the fated legendary Super Saiyan, though, to truly be his rival, he needs to be able to draw out all of the godly key he has inside himself. Broly is confused at the mention of godly key. This is something he's never heard of. He's met gods such as Kami and Shin, and their key felt the same to him as his own, though his was much greater. Yet, here's Beerus, who is definitely stronger than him somehow, and he can't sense his energy whatsoever. This must truly be some divine energy he has yet to untap. Beerus says that they will take him up to their realm, and Whis will train him to harness all of the godly key he can, so he can be the true Super Saiyan God. Broly says that he can't just go off with them and leave his family behind, with this remark annoying Beerus. He says that's a shame, and if he doesn't go along with them, then he'll just have to destroy the planet. Broly growls, saying that's not exactly a fair exchange, but if he has to, he'll do it. Goku asks if he can come along too, since he'd love for a chance to get even more powerful himself, and it would probably be better for Broly if he went along too. Beerus really doesn't want to take him, since this Saiyan kind of disappointed him, but Whis remarks that he has some great ideas for training two people, and if he takes both of them, then Beerus may get his greatest rival even sooner. Beerus sighs and reluctantly agrees that Goku can come along as well. The two say goodbye to their families, promising them that they'll return someday, and sort everything out, as they are taken by the god and off to his world. Now, the Earth is protected by only Gohan and Bra. 
Sure, they have Vegeta and Nappa there too, but really, it's only up to them. While Goku and Broly are away from the planet, the Frieza Force discover that the Saiyans who destroyed Frieza are gone. This is their chance to return to the planet and use those Dragon Balls they've discovered to return their Emperor to life. Before Sorbet and Tagama go down, they are stopped by King Cold. King Cold says that they're not going down to Earth. Frieza wasn't killed by Goku and Broly, he was killed by the two children, Gohan and Bra, who happen to still be on the planet. If they go down to revive him now, they will surely all be killed. That's the reason he hasn't gone to Earth in all these years. Though, by watching how events have unfolded on the planet, he's been able to discover the existence of another set of Dragon Balls, the ones that are on Namek. If they go to Namek, there's nobody there that can stop them, and Frieza will be back to them in one piece. The Force arrive on Namek, slaughtering most of the Namekians and taking a few of them hostage, putting a mind control device on them, that way they can use them to summon Purunga. Purunga is summoned, with the first wish being to return Frieza to life, and the second to be to bring him to Namek. Frieza is indeed revived and returned to Namek, though wasn't specified to return exactly to their location, so they unfortunately have to use the third wish to bring him directly to them. Frieza is returned to his father, with King Cold happy to see his son again. He asks him what happened to him, with Frieza remarking that he was killed by these hybrid Saiyan brats. It's the most humiliating thing that has ever happened to him, and he'll return to Earth to stomp them into nothing. King Cold tells Frieza, not so fast. Those children have just gotten stronger and stronger ever since he was killed. If they go back now, then he'll be defeated easier than he was before. To be able to take those brats down themselves, they are going to have to train together. few months go by, with Gohan and Bra training together to get even more powerful after the defeat of their fathers. This Beerus was bad news, and with even Broly defeated by him, they need to get even stronger than him to be able to protect the planet. That threat is arriving however right now, in the form of Frieza and King Cold. The entire Z Fighter crew sense their energies and arrive at the location of their ship, wondering how the Emperor could have returned. Frieza and his father leave their ship to tell the others that it's been a very long time, and they're especially surprised to see that Vegeta and Nappa are still alive. They could have sworn they were killed years ago, but here they are, domesticated by these Earthlings. Vegeta's anger gets the better of him, with him exploding into his Super Saiyan 2 form to shut Frieza up. He's trained to get even more powerful than him, and he's going to make him suffer. Vegeta rushes right into Frieza, with him taken down in one blow. The others look on in horror. Frieza was taken out by them as children, how is he able to defeat a Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta with just one hit now? They're gonna really have to give it to them now. Gohan and Bra erupt into their own Super Saiyan 2 states and try to battle with Frieza and Cold. They're thankfully able to match them in power in their bases due to all of the training they've done since their fathers left, but still, they don't think they should be struggling this much. Frieza's gotten much more powerful than before. Frieza is happy to see that he's giving the brats a hard time now, compared to how it was when they last fought. His father may have been over-exaggerating when he told him of how strong the two have gotten. They're really nothing to him now. The two tell them that they're bluffing, they're evenly matched, they're going down whether they like it or not. King Cold laughs, telling the children they really are naive. They've been holding back a new power they've achieved this whole time. Gohan tries to call them out on their bluff, but no, they're not bluffing. The two fly next to each other and explode in a golden light, becoming Golden Frieza and Golden King Cold. Gohan and Bra look on in terror at the two in front of them, wondering how they've gotten this much more powerful. Gohan flies up to land a punch on Frieza, with Frieza taking it head on, not moving an inch. Frieza then lands a punch on Gohan, with it reverting him back to base. Bra screams out and goes to help him, with her being pummeled into the ground by cold. The two half Saiyans are brutally beaten by the Golden Frost Demons and left in a bloody mess. Nappa, Goten, Trunks, Krillin, and Tien fly in to try and help them, but are smacked away like nothing. There's really nothing that can be done. 
Frieza flies above to Saiyan, saying it's a shame that they were nothing to them this time. He was expecting something after their last bout, but no, now he'll send them straight to hell along with the rest of their pitiful race. Frieza launches a death ball straight down at the two, attempting to kill them and destroy the earth. But to his surprise, the ball stops right in place, with a green glow emitting from behind it. The death ball is thrown back up to Frieza, hitting him dead on and sending him right up into the air. Cold looks down to see what happened, with Bra standing up, glowing with green energy. She says that she's the daughter of Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan. She won't allow them to destroy the planet she calls home. They're going to pay for coming here. She explodes in power, blowing Gohan away from her as she erupts into her own legendary Super Saiyan state. Everybody is stunned to see Bra looking so much like her father, as she flies into the air faster than they can see, landing a devastating gut shot to King Cold. He spits up blood as he is struck into the ground nearby. Frieza flies down to get revenge, with Bra catching his strike and headbutting him. Frieza recoils in pain, as Bra opens her mouth to fire a devastating beam right in Frieza's face. He is blown back into the air, with Bra instantly catching up and beating on him some more. Frieza wonders what the hell could be happening. This power, this is no Super Saiyan. These strikes are so furious, so full of wrathful rage. How can this girl be so powerful? He's the mighty Lord Frieza. Frieza tries to power up more to beat on Bra, but finds that his energy is dwindling. How is that possible? He's the mightiest being in the universe. His power should be going up, not down. Bra's power is doing the complete opposite. Bra's energy rises and rises, with every strike being more and more devastating. King Cold flies in to try and help his son, though to his surprise, his power is fading away as well. Before they know it, they're back into their normal forms, with Bra exploding a Kamehameha right onto the two, completely blowing them into nothingness. Gohan slowly walks up to Bra, saying that was amazing. She has the same power as her father. How did she manage to access something like that? Before Gohan could finish though, Bra has her hand grasp around his throat, and she's staring at him with a crazed look in her eye. Gohan curses himself, as she's not only gotten the same strength as Broly, she's gotten the uncontrollable rage as well. He powers up into his Super Saiyan form once more to get her off of him, but her grip is too tight, and he can feel himself slipping away. As Gohan is about to be done for, Broly appears next to his daughter, knocking her into the ground. Broly pounces on her, holding her down with all of his might, telling her to calm herself. It's just him and Gohan. Bra screams out, powering up even further to get Broly off of her. Though, with Broly's own power and him continuing to talk to her, she eventually is able to calm down enough to regain her sanity. She loses her berserker form and stares right at her father and then at Gohan who's looking at her in worry. She can see her handprint on his neck and how red it is. If her father hadn't intervened when he did, he would be... he would be... Bra breaks down crying into her dad's arms, saying she's so sorry. She didn't mean to lose control. Broly hugs her back, telling his daughter that he understands. He's the only one who can understand. She helped bring him back before and he's gonna help bring her back now. He's going to teach her how to control her new legendary power. And with that, we're gonna be leaving this part right here. I really hope you guys enjoyed the next part of this what if. With us having Bra unlock the same power as her father, I figured that would make for a more interesting Resurrection F instead of Goku or Broly coming and wiping the floor with Frieza. But that's just me and let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Next time, we're gonna head into the events of the Universe 6 tournament. And if this video can hit 500 likes, then I'll make sure to get working on the next episode. Before we go, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons for helping to support this channel. If you guys didn't know, this series was originally a patron suggestion, suggested by my patron, Dreadpool. If you guys want to have your own what-if turned to reality, then make sure to support me on Patreon at any tier, and I'll make sure to get your what-if made. I'd like to thank all of my current patrons. As in the official patron tier, we have Nathan, BBB, and Bossmaker. In the moving up in the world tier, we have Patrick Sandlin, John Lister, David Monroe, Sinshenron92, Oakwood Tree, Ogadashiba, Monal, Eric Doss, Blake Foyer, Matthew Garcia, Vegito Gaming72, True Lightning Striker, Joseph Kelvin Liu, Semroth, Speedster352, and Dreadpool. In the VIP patron tier, we have Always Zero and Levin726. And finally, in the God tier, we have 
Tony Kage, Tales Homie 99, and Caleb Gotcha FNAF. Thank you, especially you three. You guys are absolute gods. And with that, thank all of you so much for watching. And until we meet again, see you later.